Hi, my name's Peter Coffin, and my name unfortunately sounds kind of like PETA. Hey, Lois, that PETA organization is silly my good name. Al PETA. See? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Long-time viewers will know that I have a strained relationship with animal rights. Now, before we get going, I think it might be good to say something. I, and I've said this many times in many ways, but I don't have a problem with individual vegans or veganism as a life choice. I actually know several. There are several vegans in CPI, the political organization I work with, and they are some of the coolest people I know. But these aren't people who do veganism as an identity or lifestyle. They're people who eat vegan. And again, as longtime viewers of the channel will know, I have a big problem with lifestyle marketing and fandom, and that's what I view veganism as. It is more or less an ideology that corrals people away from critique of actual systems and instead into moralizing. And the response to that will be, well, I'm critiquing the system. The system needs to stop producing meats. It is cruel and inhumane. Ah, moralism. It is unsustainable. Ah, moralism. If you think carbon or greenhouse gases are like the bane of society, the real issue of today, and you talk about cows all the time rather than the U.S. military, which is by far the largest emitter of greenhouse gases, you probably won't like to hear this, but I don't take you seriously. PETA is crazy out of touch. PETA being People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, an organization that is just a masterclass in how not to get people to take you seriously. I don't know whether they are some form of psychological warfare or just the least aware people of all time, but they do not understand the idea that even coming from their viewpoint of idealism and moralism, it's still important to try to convince people of things rather than just shit all over everything that they like and tell them that they're bad. There's a couple of things I want to talk about with PETA today, which are honestly kind of astounding to me. The first one, which is what actually brought me in, is this article on exposing the viral cat distribution system. So out of the gate, on January 12th, 2024, PETA says, What's wrong with the cat distribution concept that's trending on TikTok and other social media platforms? It focuses on a few rare stories of homeless cats who have found suitable guardians and ignores the fate of millions of others who struggle to survive on the streets or in overburdened animal shelters that are bursting at the seams with cats in need of loving homes. Okay, um, what's the cat distribution system? I feel like in order to expose how something is wrong, you need to tell us what is wrong about it, or even like what it is. Here, PETA says that it's a trend and all right. The cat distribution system ignores three big problems. What is it? What is the cat distribution system? This article says nothing about what the cat distribution system is. It just says that it's wrong and that it ignores problems. Now, I don't know if you've watched any video I've ever made, but I always try to explain the thing that I'm talking about for people who may not have heard of it, because I don't know what the cat distribution system is. Or at least I didn't before I saw this and I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? So according to Know Your Meme, cat distribution system is a phrase coined by TikToker Hermes the Cynic to describe the common occurrence of cats entering people's homes and lives unannounced and inadvertently getting adopted. This cliche is an often discussed aspect of cat ownership and adds to the narrative that you don't adopt a cat, but rather it adopts you. The phrase grew popular near the end of 2022 and continued to be used through January 2023. And on January 12th, 2024, PETA took a stand, stood up to that evil TikTok trend. That is totally insane. But I'm going to show you something that's a little bit more insidious. I put out a documentary called Less Sucks over population, eugenics, and degrowth. I'll do the link thing. Um, watch it. It's two hours and 20 minutes, so be warned. It's a feature length real documentary, uh, but I do promise it progresses rather than it's just a long chain of things me that I say. One ideology that keeps coming up, it's a string through both overpopulation and eugenics, 
is that the solution to poverty is either population control or selective breeding. Those things are the merciful ways that the fit people can enact the power that they should have over others in order to fix poverty. Now, it shouldn't be hard to figure out how that leads to some seriously fucked up stuff, and it is very different to apply this ideology to cats rather than people, but there's also a reason why they continue to repeat it about cats. It's because it does reinforce that proclivity towards the destruction of life as the solution to suffering. The cat distribution is the result of overpopulation, not the solution to a problem. Um, nobody said it was a solution to any problem. Like, nobody's even talking about it from that perspective. It's like a cute video of some guy saying, Cats adopt you rather than you adopt them. Sometimes stray cats walk in off the street and say, You're my human, blah, blah, blah. I believe women should all have the choice to live the life they want to live. Wait, what's that? A woman choosing to live a traditional lifestyle? We shouldn't be romanticizing the idea of these cats choosing a life of servitude to humans. Why, the humans are the virus. They are the evil ones. They are destroying the planet. If only, right? But another, like, quicker way I kind of want to show... Uh, how PETA is out of touch. They're trying to use leather to make Vladimir Putin and Kim Jong-un look bad. What can we learn from dictators' robes? PETA's new ads will show you. And I refuse not to use that voice when talking about how bad the former communist and current communist state leaders are. People who wear leather are more dangerous than you think. Turning skin into leather requires significant energy and dangerous chemicals, including formaldehyde, coal tar derivatives, and cyanide-based oils, dyes, and finishes. Oh no, not that. Not a thing that people have been doing since before the Middle Ages. Anything but that. I'll tell you exactly how they're out of touch with this one. Putin and Kim look cool as shit in this photo. <laughs> Like, first off, these are AI-generated images, so that's the silliest aspect about it. If they're not AI-generated images, then they should have AI-generated them because they picked or generated images that make them look cool. Like, if your agenda is to make them look bad, these images fail miserably. Like, you know what that woman is, is thinking, looking at that photo right there? Leather is badass. The one that's not looking is, is the PETA. Look at her face. You can just tell how much she hates being alive. My entire life is about not eating a certain thing. Oh, and I have a bunch of complex moral justifications that center around my superiority over other people rather than the means of production and its ownership relations. But I center it around the ownership relations. I say that people need to attack the capitalists because they produce me. Shut the fuck up. You go to the grocery store and you buy something that costs a bit more than the other shit that everybody else is eating. And you know what? It's not not shit. You're eating shit and so am I. You're just paying more for it. And that, again, isn't even to say all vegan food is bad. It's just not better than our food. You say cows are destroying the environment? It's because of soy production. You say, take the cow production out of the equation, it'll reduce the soy production. If all human food suddenly needs soy, you think soy production is going to go down? You buying some fake sausage for three times the price is real sausage, it doesn't change anything. It just lines some asshole's pockets more than the sausage would. If you eat vegan for some individual reason, um, it makes you feel better, you have a food allergy, you just prefer it. Those are all legitimate, good reasons to be a vegan. The idea that the market straightforwardly operates on a principle of supply and demand is not. Because it doesn't. Now, I get heated about this because it comes back to my main shit, which is cultivated identity, fandom, consumer cults, etc. As much as I think that one of these lifestyle vegans is an irritating person, it's not their fault. It's ideology. It's portrayed to them a certain way, and that's just how it works. And I doubt that me presenting things this way is going to change a lot of their minds. Maybe some of them. I don't know. 
but I don't think a lot of them. But they're also almost none of the population. Between 1999 and now, the number of vegetarians in the United States has decreased from 6% to 4%, and vegans now make up about 1% of the U.S. population. This despite the fact that during that time period, more and more vegan lifestyle content has been made. More and more people out there have told you that veganism is better for you over this period of time. And yet, and yet indeed. Now, all of this is to get to a point. The neoliberal life involves a consumer market. The choices that one makes supposedly change the world. After all, you vote with your wallet, right? But here's the thing. The fandom and the anti-fandom are ultimately both ideologies that support the structure. Everything has been made into a partisan issue so that everything can be made into a fandom. And everybody can be funneled down each different direction on all of these fandoms, making all their consumer choices throughout life and changing nothing about how things work. Oh man, that right wing, it's so terrible. We need to present an alternative. All right, let's do the left. And so the left grows in popularity as it calls out the nonsense of the right and begins introducing its own nonsense because the stuff that gets promoted by the media structures are certainly not the things that actually lead to change, instead that lead to more consumption. Ah, oh, that left! Oh man, that's looking so stupid. Uh, maybe it would be good to do the right now. And so the right rises with a new and accurate critique of the left. Yes, aesthetically they are pointing out the problems of that ever-annoying left. But what is the right built on? Um, preserving the structures that are making the problems. You can separate every issue into this, even things that seem apolitical. They don't have to have an overt political connotation. They just have to have two sides of an issue. And that's what freedom is in neoliberalism. It's the ability to choose one side of these issues, both of which always are rendered harmless to the structures. If you're not actually working on this stuff, identifying contradictions in material relationships that actually lead back to power, your goal isn't to change anything. It's to be the real fan, the one that knows more, that's consumed more. It is a competitive consumption race that they have us on, but it is truly just another hamster wheel. I said this a few weeks ago, when I get Whoppers from Burger King, I get the Impossible Whopper because it's way better on my insides. It does very much change my poops, but that really only affects me and like probably sewage treatment employees. If you want to be a vegan, that's fine. I have no judgment for you whatsoever, if it's about you. But if you're telling people that consumer choices are what change the world, you're helping divert people away from things that can change the world. It's actually not that hard to make distinctions between what is just a consumer choice and what is something where you're building community and relationships and power. Because yes, you do need power to change the world. And if you think that you can vote with your dollars, think about how many more votes the guys who own everything have than you. That's all I got for you. I appreciate your time. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe become a patron. Um, have yourself a nice day.